Science you should know about. Science you should know about. All right. So in the science you should know about, addiction. Addiction is really, that's terrible text. I'm sorry, you could barely read that. The progressive narrowing of what you find enjoyable. I took that quote from Dr. Andrew Huberman. Again, I've been listening to that guy nonstop, so he's in my mind. But um, the phrasing he used, I've listened to so many books on addiction, and I've been to a lot of different talks. At one time, I was even forced to go to an addiction rehab place for cannabis due to some legal things. Um, that was really just to get out of the legal things. But I've been through different recovery programs. Um, I was forced to go to AA. I've seen lots of things. By the way, the forced to go to AA thing, again, that was for legal reasons. I don't even really drink alcohol that often. Um, they just have a weird system where they try to milk you of your dollars. Okay, so anyway, on the real topics here, the progressive narrowing of what you find enjoyable in terms of food, because that's what we talk about here, and diet. When it comes to food, we have over-addictive foods in our life, foods that are full of sugar, foods that are full of reward, very intensely rewarding chemicals, high fats, high sugars, all these inflammatory oils. These high rewards are actually progressively over time narrowing what we find enjoyable in the real real food world. Those parents who may have raised children in the standard American diet world will know that those children oftentimes like veggies less, that they tend to want more starchy foods, more of that gummy bear and soda type food. That's the reason why we have these basement dwellers that are becoming known as incels. It's because of their progressive narrowing of what they have found enjoyable. You know, they have been brainwashed by these over-rewarding foods and the over-rewards of playing video games and being cooped into their rooms, and they're not discovering different rewarding things and pathways out there, and so their brains get stuck in this loop. That's what happens with alcoholism and other foods, substances as well. It's known as the hedonic treadmill. The hedonic treadmill and how it affects adaptation. Essentially, we get that first hit. We keep going more forward and forward, chasing that hit. And as we keep getting more of that hit, our vision for what else is rewarding out there starts to narrow and it loses path. And so we start to say, oh, I just like this thing a lot. And then we start to get hooked and addicted to that thing. That can be food. It can be sex. It can be lying. It can be uh, hyper rewarding television, social media. (sighs) The list is endless. Nicotine, caffeine, coffee, you know, chocolate. All these things are so addictive. Um, So we suggest taking temporary abstinence, temporary abstinence. You don't have to quit your thing of choice forever. We're just saying quit for little bits at a time so that you let the other reward pathways in your brain start to grab onto other things that you find enjoyable so that you, instead of having that progressively narrowing pathway of what you find enjoyable, you open new pathways to find other things that are enjoyable. For instance, some people go by the, the game Sober October. I discovered this idea from the joe rogan podcast a while back when he did it with his sober buddies they all saw drastic changes in their bodies from that month of doing it um they were in a battle almost over how much exercise they could do because they were so hooked on the new rewards of competing with their buddies and changing the way they saw alcohol right it was no longer alcohol is my reward for having fun it's now sober october now my new rewards are exercising and competing with my mates okay so that's another thing to think about when it comes to addiction maybe taking off long periods maybe a week maybe a month for us here i try to recommend let's just do a week off of whatever that substance or thing is that's taking over your brain but try to keep it on a calendar system so it's like the first week of every month maybe i'll quit doing this thing but then i'm allowed to have it again because if your brain knows you're allowed to have that item again then you no longer are grieving the loss of it another very educational thing that I found useful that Huberman said is that when we are grieving loss, then we feel like we can no longer take actions behind that thing anymore. So if you're a person who's going on a diet and you're you're going to grieve the loss of those favorite foods you had, not only because you were addicted to them, but because you fear that you no longer have the chance to make them an actionable thing. You're no longer allowed to put that thing in your mouth. And so it's really the 
brain saying, no, you can't do that anymore. It's almost like you've lost something in life or lost a loved one. However, on the other hand, if you say, hey, this thing's going to be really enjoyable for me in the future, but I know that I can have it again, then it's much easier to abstain from those things. Okay, back to the sober idea here. Um, another way to increase the reward in your pathways is corny, but it is gratitude. Again, the studies and science on this just keep coming out. The more gratitude you show for things that you enjoy in life, the less narrow those addiction pathways become because you are relishing and enjoying more things that are available to you in the map of life rather than just those addictive things. I know there have been times in my mind when I had been more on an addictive cycle in my brain for things like alcohol or cannabis, and I would be like at a party, and instead of enjoying being around beautiful women and enjoying being with my friends and enjoying conversing and playing games my brain was just thinking about well what games can i play to get more alcohol in me because i just want to get drunk right my reward pathway was just i was like not even socializing i was just thinking about the alcohol and figuring out how to escape this anxiety that i was feeling of being there so again in that circumstance if i had more gratitude for why i was there more gratitude for being around those people i don't think at the time i would have been more eager to go get more alcohol uh, that was the young me, you know, that was like 10 years ago. So more than 10, actually, that was 12 years ago. So it's been a long time. I'm a different person. Um, last bit of suggestion here. Also, you know, this is coming from my mouth out of vulnerability. I have been through a lot of different addictive cycles. Fortunately, I consider myself a rather expert at getting out of addictive cycles as well, which is what I'm trying to help everybody do here is to get out of destructive addictive cycles, but to get into productive positive addictive cycles all right the last thing we have here is pay attention to the things you're naturally drawn to they're often connected to your path passion and purpose in life have the courage to follow them so when you find more things you naturally are passionate about you can draw towards those passions and work towards those things more increasing the reward response in your brain thus not keeping that pathway narrow but instead bolstering it making the pathway of reward bigger so that the addictive cycles are more geared towards positivity of those passions you have. You know, you can get addicted to writing books. You can get addicted to writing music. You can get addicted to learning. You can get addicted to improvement of self in the gym. You know, obviously these things can be negative over time if you let them become negative. But if you get addicted to these positive, somewhat, you know, mostly positive traits, you'll be able to have a better balance on your life and your goals towards fitness and in health. Nobody's perfect. And again, you know, I don't want to share these things like I'm perfect. I just know that in the past with myself, with my clients, studying neuroscience, studying human behavior, biology, decision making, endocrinology, how the hormones work, um, how food is the role of food and all of those things. When you put all of that together, we know that the brain is an addictive looping cycle. That's all it really is, is we're just a system of patterns of habits that are constantly habituating our thoughts over and over and over and then using data points from outside to sort of shift those thoughts but if we allow ourselves to just stay stuck into these addictive things you know if you're just addicted to these few things internet and, and alcohol or whatever your addiction is late night staying up too late those addictive cycles can be controlled for to create more positive addictive cycles all righty gonna move over to the habit roll call but first i believe we have a good morning Good morning shout out here. Good morning shout out. Let me move this over a little bit so we can fit this up onto the screen. I apologize for these live coordinations. Tracy Warner Hawkman. Hope everyone is having a wonderful weekend. Good morning. Boom, baby. She's already in weekend mode. It's already Saturday to her. <laughs> I hope you are having a great morning as well, Tracy, and a blessed weekend to you. Everybody else who's live, let's make sure we're commenting below and saying hello and getting our check-ins as well. Okay, and then now we're time to move over to the habit roll call. The world famous habit roll call. Boom! We're here. 
All right, at the Habit Roll Call, a short amount of check-ins today, so I guess I'm getting through this one fast. Tracy Warner Hoffman, day 52, walked for 35 minutes, eat healthy for breakfast and lunch. Dinner will be out at a restaurant, so I'll try to pick what's best for me. Great, great control there. I love seeing that. A very big suggestion we usually impart on going to restaurants are, one, hydrating well before you go. Two, checking the menu online before you go to the place so you have an idea of what you're going to have before you get there. Three, not putting the pressure on yourself to finish the meal you had, but instead get some takeout you know, options. When you finish half of it, ask for a plate and take the other half with you. Um, there's so many other options, getting a healthy dish and sharing it with your partner. I'm trying to think of what else is out there. And... Uh, Loading up on protein, protein-rich foods. So that would be a good five tips to what to do when you're eating out at a restaurant. That was just freestyled. And also, Tracy, that's not necessarily directed to you. Sometimes when I just see things in here, it provokes thought about things I might want to talk about. Evelyn Price, good morning, day 51, no sugar, over six grams. Oh, she's off this week. I'm off this week, so I actually did a workout with a trainer for Gold's Gym yesterday. Did my stretches, kettlebell swings, clean and lifts done. Hip exercises are done this morning. Still hard right now because all my muscles are sore. Don't know why. Hope everyone has a great day. Miss Evelyn, you know what we talked about in terms of protein intake and tracking protein intake? Super proud of you for going to the Gold's Gym and getting out there and trying new things, working on yourself. Do recall, though, the soreness. Most times we talk about it between you and I. Soreness usually comes down to not getting enough protein in. So really encourage you, maybe just for a week, to try to actually track down on paper how many grams of protein you got in that day. It just will make a difference, I promise. Mike Wassman, day 15 of reading, and I finished the novel I started a couple of weeks ago. It feels so good to actually read a book in its entirety. It is very rewarding to do that, Mike. Not going to pretend like I haven't started way more books than I've actually finished. Boom. Excellent, Mr. Mike. Appreciate the check-ins. How about you let us know what you're going to do next for your habit? Uh, I'd also like to know if your physical therapy habits are still going. Here at Stick To It Fitness, we do encourage people to anchor old habits to the new ones. So that means when we're starting something new, we don't just throw the other one out by the wayside. We keep them up. So we want to make sure you're upkeeping your PT and your training and making sure that's going well for you. Iggy ended up pulling a double at work last night and into the day was up for nearly 22 hours straight. Let's give him a shout out for that one. Bow, bow, bow. So, no surprise, I feel like crap, but this afternoon, only four hours of sleep. I got my six lifts in today, as well as a walk and the dogs leaving it at for the exercise for the day. I'm on vacation for the next week, so lots of rest and movement to come. Also realized that yesterday, I had an extra 20 pounds on my deadlift. Oops. Hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, look at that. He's accidentally lifting more weight during his habits because he's so habitual. He's just so used to doing his thing. It doesn't even have to think when he's training. So it's like he might not have even realized he lifted an extra 20 pounds because he was so in flow state. He's not worried about what he's doing. He's probably not even really there. He's just in a flow because it's such a routine for him. Sammy, day 39, conditioning, 3.5 mile jog, booty homework, foam rolling, and stretching. This year I've learned how to say no and to let go without feeling guilty. As a recovering people pleaser perfectionist, I tend to feel responsible for others. Been there and still am. I've learned that I need to step aside and let others problem solve, take the lead in order for them to learn and navigate, grow from experiences. I could take a lesson from that in this group, huh, Sammy? If things aren't done to my standards, as I tend to do it myself, but that enables certain behavior dependencies. So I have learned and I'm still actively practicing how to let go and be at peace with that decision. Oi. Goodness gracious. What a great share that was. Um, Please read that over, everybody, if you haven't gotten a chance. Sammy's a very intelligent person, and, um, you know, this speaks wisdom and volumes here. So letting go, really, when you come talking to addictions, this is what we're talking about. It's the grief process. If you can't let go of something, you're going to grieve over its loss. And then so it's going to become in your brain the opposite of rewarding thus painful when you say to yourself, I can't have or do this thing. But when you have the ability to just say, let go. You know, whether that's saying to yourself, I'm having trouble sleeping. Well, let go of that thought, right? If you can let go of anger, let go of the guilt. If you can let go of those things the way we can let go of ourselves when it comes to binge eating or um, alcohol or, or just partying too hard or whatever it is, or just um, eating too many treats, any too many snacks, 
every whatever anybody's version of letting go is, we can let go in positive ways as well. All righty, I think that's all the check-ins. We're a little short on check-ins this week. I'm going to hunt, hunt people down. I'm going to keep the passion going, and hopefully the momentum of that passion will pick back up the group because four-person check-in just seems kind of weak. A little disappointed. Five-person, I guess. A little disappointed in myself, but grateful that there's still five people to be here and that we can serve those five who checked in. I know that, according to the data, there are more people watching. They're just kind of sneaking back there without their check-ins. Let's make sure we are getting our comment check-ins because it is what, at the end of the day, holds you accountable and then makes you achieve your goal. All right, got to run. It's two minutes past. So sorry, Baron. Didn't even realize. On my way. I'm Trainer Steve. I'm out. You got to stick to it to get it.